We're recording, so we're good. Okay. You're ready, Jim? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Welcome. Welcome to all of you, um, Park Ridge homeowners. Um, I'm Lisa Tulin Silver, and I have had the distinction of living in two houses on Park Ridge, one for 20 years and one for 22 years. So I've been up and down that terrible road many times. And this is Amy Milanovic. Um, and we have been working on this project together since May, I believe. Um, we are here today to discuss improving the road. We probably all can agree that the road needs some work. Um, we may not agree exactly how to fix it and the costs of fixing it, but it is not the best road. Um, so Amy and I got together because just one day we both independently got fed up with the road. I went over one too many potholes and I don't know what happened to you, but we started calling uh, Sio Township and complaining and complaining. And instead of complaining, we decided we would work together for some positive goals. So that is how we got here. <laughs> I might be the only one clapping, but thank you. <laughs> and in fact, it was the township that connected us, which I thought was a really Yes, the great township thing. connected us, which was very clever on their part. Yes. Because then we <laughs> stopped complaining. <laughs> anyway, so I just want to say right from the beginning, Amy and I are new to this. This is a blank slate for us. Um, and that... I want you to be patient with us because we really don't know all the answers, but we're just trying our best. Um, and um, one of the other interesting things about this is there's a brand new, well, a reconstituted um, Sio Township Road Committee that used to exist and then apparently did not exist for a period of time and now has begun again. So they too are here tonight. Some of the members um, are here tonight, which I'll introduce you to. Um, and they have a wealth of information and they too are just learning. So please be patient with all of us who are in the process of learning how to improve our roads. So um, let's see, the road, this new committee is trying to establish uh, protocols and norms for everybody in the township who wants to improve their roads. And Park Ridge Drive is their first test case. So there are a lot of people who are struggling with how to do this. And um, these wonderful members are working together. So it will be easier for the people who come after us, but hopefully for us as well. So uh, let me introduce you to some of the members here today. This is Roy Townsend. And Roy is the vice chair of the road committee. He spent 31 years at the Washtenaw Road Commission and is presently involved in the B2B trails and some of the, the wonderful bicycle paths that we're, we're finding in our community. Um, he was even involved in paving um, Park Ridge near Wagner and paving Park Ridge near uh, Laurentide and Maple. So that is how long he has been working on our, our roads and we're really happy to have him here. Um, and Bob Groden is another member of the road committee. He's an engineer and he's a dedicated volunteer um, who's making our roads better and working hard for all of us. Um, Jillian Carey back here working Zoom for us is on the SIO road committee and she's a SIO trustee elect who's going to take her oath of office on November Last night. Last night? Yeah, okay, last night. yay, congratulations. Um, if there, I don't know if there are any other members of the road committee here, but if so, no, okay. So there's no, no one else here. Um, so I do wanna just tell you a quick personal story on this adventure we've been on fixing, trying to fix the roads. Um, we have learned a lot in this process um, and, um, one day, let's see, in the summertime, um, we were told that we needed to get a scope of the road 
I had no idea what that meant, but Roy explained that that meant that um, the road commission would walk our road and they would like look at all of the houses and the dirt and the drainage and they would figure out what were the kinds of things they needed to do each step of the way. Um, so Amy and I, you know, tagged along and all of a sudden six members of the Washington Road Commission showed up, which we were astonished by. And every single one of them had a different area of expertise. And it was fabulous. So um, as we walked the road from Wagner all the way up to Maple, um, they pointed out to Amy and to me all of the different ways that they would fix the various parts of this poorly functioning system. And what impressed us so much was there was no one size fits all. Um, it, they had very nuanced plans for every piece of the road. Um, so, you know, at one point they would say, well, you know, th these culverts need to be cleared out. And another time, who knew the culverts run under everybody's driveways? We didn't know that. And they have machines that will um, go under the driveways and clear out the culverts. They said, um, we can grade the road so that the water will flow out into the woods. They said, we can plant last grass here. Um, we can do spot drainage here. So they started to give us a real sense of how the road could be repaired. Um, one of the most important parts of, of this whole process is that they plan to add crushed limestone, about six inches, six inches of crushed limestone, which will be domed in the middle so that then all of the water will drain from the top of the road down into all of these different drainage systems that they're going to put into effect. Um, we were very pleased we found um, the WRC to be knowledgeable, practical, and really concerned about maintaining the natural feel that our neighborhood has, which is probably one reason all of us live there, that we were attracted to that. And first, they didn't want to take any trees down, not a one, uh, but eventually we saw that there were a couple of trees that had grown up out of the culvert. So some of those, there are just a few of them would need to be removed, but it, it, it's not like the previous plan where there were going to be a lot of trees that had to be cut down, nothing like that. Um, so um, we just want to say that the, the SIO Road Committee, uh, the SIO administrators at SIO Township Hall and the Washington Road Commission have been great to work with. And we've been doing this now for six months. Um, and we feel really good about the plan and proposal we've put together and hope that you too will feel that way um, and be comfortable moving forward after you have all of your questions answered. So thank you so much for participating. And now Amy will explain to you more about the plan. Um, so I tend to be very informal with this stuff and just to give you a sense of how we thought it would be helpful to kind of go through this. I'm gonna kind of go over a little bit about what the, what the issues are, but also what the plan is, what the process is. We wanna be super transparent. We, we, like Lisa said, we're just learning. Um, we are residents. We don't know what we're talking about for the most part, but we have found ourselves really pleasantly su surrounded by experts who are not only knowledgeable, but have also been incredibly helpful and incredibly honest with us about the road, the plans, what's going to work, what's not going to work. And so we just want to have a conversation, all of us together about that, about what we found, about what we kind of propose. Um, I, we would go, I'm going to go through a couple of our kind of the, the plans and the process, and then go through the questions that we got by email because we got quite a lot of questions by, by email, which was great. They do tend to, to kind of fall into some categories, which totally makes sense. We mostly have the same questions. Um, and then we'll open it at the end for discussion and questions. So um, hopefully a lot of what you're wondering will be covered, but obviously if not, this is the time to, one of the times to talk and we'll get into that. Um, 
So I do want to reiterate what Lisa said, that we have found everybody to be just a pleasure to work with. Everybody has been welcoming. Everybody has been honest and transparent, and they've been nothing but supportive. So it's just been really a, a pleasant surprise, I would say, um, given what, what I sort of had expected. Like Lisa, I just want to mention a couple of things that I've learned along the way um, that I didn't know six months ago. The first one, which might be obvious, is that every road has a lifespan. That is the reality. And our road is beyond its lifespan. So Roy and I were just talking and we estimate, he estimates that the dirt part of our road is probably 50. Yeah, I mean, we're, some of the first homes were put, what, in the 1960s? Does anyone know? 57, my mom's the oldest house. 67, yeah. So that was when the road was first built. So. It's that was probably some of the original, but well, it's when the road was built. So it really hasn't been rebuilt probably since that point. So that's, it went from private to public right around 1970. Yeah. Okay. Well, and so one could argue the definition of road because it's kind of like was patched together. Nobody had a plan because there was no cross section that was agreed that was agreed to from the beginning. That's why one side has no ditch and another side has a big ditch. Yeah. So road is almost... Yeah, so I think I think we we just have to acknowledge that this is well past its lifespan and it's not anybody's fault necessarily that it is where it is. It's just the reality of a road. The other issue is maintenance and we all know that's an issue and we're going to talk a lot about that tonight. Um, but the reality is that the ditches and the culverts have not been maintained and one of the things that I learned in this process is that the maintenance of those are are on the homeowner and our houses did not come with a manual that said this is what you need to do to maintain the road. Um, I didn't know until recently that we were responsible for certain things that there were certain things happening all over our road that are um, kind of against code or, or the sort of way things should be done. Um, and so that's just a reality that we need to address as we go along. Um, so those are really the two things that have led to the condition that the road is in now. And part of it is just a natural evolution that's just gonna happen. Uh, so because of that, we all know what's happened, right? The road is washing away. It's washing away in different parts. It's washing into culverts. Culverts are full. Um, ditches are full, they're overgrown. The culverts of the ditches, the water system simply doesn't work. There is no water system on our on Park Ridge as we speak. Um, it's just out of the way it was designed to be. And we know that the side streets coming in are an issue and we've talked about that and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but the reality is that the whole road is just out of whack and it just really needs to be replaced, repaired if we want a road that's really passable and is not gonna to continue to wash away. Um, there are areas of the road where vision is really low and also areas that I didn't even notice. I walk the road all the time, but I didn't notice that there are areas of the road that are really narrow, like one car can pass. Um, and even though I drive down the road and walk down the road, I hadn't even really noticed that until we walked, but those are not the way it was intended to be. Uh, and so those are things that can be fixed. So, Who's responsible? Um, the property owners are basically responsible for maintenance. Now, obviously, Sio Township and the Washtenaw County Road Commission is responsible for a certain level of maintenance on the road. And one of the things that I learned has to do with money. And we all know well that Sio Township taxes are much lower than, for example, Ann Arbor. And the bottom line is you get what you pay for. Our taxes are lower, our services are less. And that's kind of the reality. So we were talking the other day as an example. So for a $400,000, for a house that's valued at $400,000, which I suspect many, many of the houses on our road are, um, we are paying a road millage, is that what you call it? A township wide special assessment of $85 per year per house. In Ann Arbor, they have two mills. So $400,000 house is taxed at $200,000. So they're paying $400 a year. Um, and I, I'm guessing, yeah, a lot of those homes in the neighborhood are probably north of $400,000. So, so if you live in the city, that's one example. You're paying $400 a year for your roads. Um, they have gravel roads in the city of Ann Arbor and they have you know, paved roads in the city of Ann Arbor. But the money from the state, and the money from the county 
doesn't fix the local subdivision roads. It becomes becomes a responsibility of the community. And some communities like Ann Arbor have put a millage in a tax and tax the community to fix those roads. So I think that's what. Yeah. Anyway, so. And so what do we get? We get basic maintenance, right? We do. They clear the roads of the snow, and I actually think they do a pretty good job of that. It's a bus route. We're lucky for that because it means that they do come through. Um, they do basic um, grading. grading and whatnot. So they do some basic maintenance. And once upon a time, they, whenever we called them, they were there. Now, I don't know if that's still the case, but we found for many years that we lived on Park Ridge that if we were to call and say the road is really a mess, within a couple of days, they'd be out and, and grading. And um, not true of the culverts, which they did use to clear. They don't anymore. It's just simply not in the budget. Uh, in the in the township and the county budget. So we could talk more about that if people have questions later, but that's kind of the reality. So the plan. Uh, the plan is to clean out and reestablish all of the existing ditches, to add new ditches where needed, um, to clear out culverts where needed. Some of the ditches will need um, stone rows going across them to help slow down water. Some won't, some of them might need some grass seed, some won't. Um, culverts, many of the culverts are either undersized or non-existent or plugged up or caved in. Those will be fixed. Um, we walked through, as Lisa said, we walked through and talked about each of the crossroads and what needs to happen where each of the crossroads meets Park Ridge. In some cases, some culverts need to be fixed or added. In some cases, the ditches actually need to run up along the side street a little bit to help move the water in the right direction. But as we walked through, there was not an indication to the, um, I, I can't reiterate how much expertise walked with us down the road. I mean, this was all the way from, what is Adam's role? Director of operations. So director of operations, um, we had the guys who are out doing the work every day. We had, I mean, they were great, all of them. And so they looked at every cross street and felt like the water management was manageable within what we could do by culverts and ditches and right. fixing. Right. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So we're doing some minor, I mean, is it amazing? You look at when we walked the whole thing, it's like, well, I went up to the driveway culvert there and sure enough, we kick around and sure enough, most of the driveways had culverts put in when they were put in. A lot of them are completely buried. Um, some you can see like the top of it and everything else is completely plugged. Um, so a lot of situations is just cleaning out those culverts, what we call reestablishing the ditch, which will be cleaning out. And, you know, so the water and um, like Lisa said, end of the day, when you build a road, it's like a house. You want a crown, basically like your roof. So the water gets off. Some water will go to this side, some water goes to this side. Right now, a lot of the areas, the water only goes one side because there's only a ditch on one side. Ideally, you want the water to go on both sides and get into ditches that it should be on both sides of the road and get into those driveway culverts. Like I said, a lot of those culverts are there. Uh, and then when we walk the road, people that had some paved driveways, I mean, I know there's a few concrete driveways, they're like six, eight inches above the road. Because that's how much the road is lowered down. Because I'm guessing when that person put in their driveway, they didn't put their concrete that high. That's where the road was 10 years, 20 years, 30 years ago. And over time, it's washed out, track, um, blown away, tracked away. It ends up in your garage, you know, on a muddy day, and you sweep it out. Um, so that's over time, that's what happens with gravel roads. You know, you got to keep adding gravel to those gravel roads. And now, this is more of a dirt road because there's not much gravel on it anymore. Um, so. So the idea is to bring it back. Yeah, bring it to back. Gravel. So, so the plan is to fix all of the ditches and culverts, reestablish the water maintenance, fix the road so that it has the crown so that the water runs down it and put on the limestone on top, which helps the water penetrate and go where it needs to go. So there were many people who wrote and asked about Craig Road. Yes, Craig Road is a good example of what we would expect our road to be like after this project process is done. And if you drive down Craig Road, you'll see that it's held up really well since, since they've done that work. Um, so there are some things just to note. So a new road surface is graded to last at least 10 years. Um, Roy's going to close his ears because we're not making any promises. 
but the expectation is that because we don't have a super high amount of traffic, that this that this new fixed road should really last us 20 to 25 years if we do proper maintenance on the water management system in the meantime. Um, and that's, again, not a promise, um, but that's the expectation. And again, you'll see like this is what 40, we're, our road is 40 years old, 50 years old, whatever it is. So that's the dirt portion. The paved portions, uh, obviously by Laurentide, it's a disaster. The other end is a little bit better, but as we've talked, um, as we talked about when we were walking, if that part is not repaired now, it will need to be so at some point, and it will be much more expensive for the folks on that end if they don't do it now with us. So the idea would be to fix the dirt part and then um, grind up and re pave the paved ends so that it is all from Wagner all the way to Maple, um, clean, clear, and with proper water flow. The cost. So the initial estimate that we got, so um, unlike the previous process that happened, we essentially have been talking with Washtenaw County Road Commission they do not need an engineering study to do this project. They walked the road with us. They were able to identify everything that needed to be done. Um, their initial estimate to do this work is between $400,000 and $480,000. That does include some cushion um, because we don't really know what costs are going to be. And that is in current dollars and in current costs. Now, we don't know what materials are going to look like. Um, when this happens, which we hope will be in the next year, but we'll have to all obviously all of that will be rebudgeted as we get closer to kind of finalizing. The idea is that it will be divided equally between 60, 9, 8, 68, I, think. Eight, I keep messing it up. I think 68, 68 parcels. parcels. And essentially, these are the homes that have addresses on Park Road, Park yeah, Ridge, driveway. which includes Bay Ridge, which is technically not its own street, it's a driveway in the of Park Ridge. So if you have, a, if you, the houses that have addresses on Park Ridge are the ones that are currently in the map. Um, the map was uh, mailed out. We also have this here. We have some other copies here, so we can look at that if there's questions. Um, again, the idea is to divide it equally for each household. They have a choice to pay either one lump sum up front or you can divide it over 10 years. If you divide it over 10 years, then the township is essentially giving you a 10 year loan. Um, there will be interest on that and it will just depend on the interest rate at the time of the loan. Um, so we estimated if it was divided equally, it would be about six to $7,000 per house. And if you divide it over 10 years, then you're talking about approximately $700 um, per year. Okay, so what is the process? So the process is interesting. Um, the idea is that we as a neighborhood would be essentially taking out a loan from Sayo Township to improve our road. And um, the process really goes through Sayo Township. It's not, mostly it's not on us. So the first thing that would happen is that we as a neighborhood would sign a petition and Sayo Township requires, now tell me if I'm saying this wrong, but Sayo Township requires that the majority of households approve this. But in order for them to really accept our petition, they require 71, 70 or more percent of households um, agreeing to start the process. And the reason for that is they don't wanna create a mess, right? They don't wanna cause chaos. So they're only gonna to decide to move forward with this if they are confident that people who live on the road want to do this. All this petition does is say, let's get the ball rolling, let's get started. Then what happens is Sayo Township does a whole bunch of stuff, um, most of which we don't need to really worry about. And then they hold a public meeting. And at the public meeting, we are all invited. There has to be a public hearing, um, public notice, and we get to ask questions, express our concerns, express our um, support. And then the board actually votes to decide whether to pursue the project, right? So then 
Of course, that's going to happen and everything's going to be great. The board's going to go through. They're going to start talking to the road commission. They're going to figure out all the legal parts. They're going to confirm all the parcels. They're going to confirm the costs. They're going to confirm how much each house has to pay. And then there's a second hearing. And at the second hearing, that will be discussed and presented or it'll be presented ahead of time, I think, yeah. right? The role, that... well, it's called the roll is set. And at that point, they'll know it's exactly 68 parcels, 67 parcels, 69. Obviously that's old. So figure out how many people are in. So if you're in, you're gonna know. And then if you're in, how much it's gonna cost you. So those are the things when the roll is set, you're just set, that's what at the second public hearing. Um, and if the, if the township board approves that, then the project moves forward. And so again, it's an opportunity for us as a neighborhood either to get together and say, hey, this is not what we expected. This is not what we agreed to. We're out. We haven't paid a penny, but we're done. We're out. Or, you know, we're we're stepping up to the plate and saying, we really want you to do this. We support your voting yes on this. And and then they they vote. Um, then the work happens. Once the work is done on the next winter tax roll, we are assessed not taxed, we are assessed um, unless you've paid the lump sum. So you, you can pay the lump sum. If you don't pay the lump sum within 30 days or there's some legalese which we can get into, um, then you'll be assessed on the winter tax bill. So that's the process. Um, so by signing a petition at this point, all we're saying is we want the board to move forward on this. We want them to talk to the road commission. We want to start the plan we want to get everything set in stone um, and then we want the, we want the neighborhood to come back for a public hearing and let us know what you think so that's kind of what i understand the process to be um, the time frame essentially is from the time we submit a signed petition it's really six to nine months until the project is done and completes so our hope is to get this petition signed and submitted by the end of December, and we'd like all of our signatures in by December 16th. Um, and our hope, our great hope is that the, the project will move forward and it can be done in the spring, summer, fall. Um, and so by this time next year, we will have a functioning road and our winter, we'd be assessed on winter um, tax if we haven't paid. So that's what we're hoping for the time frame. Um, so our next step is, is the petition um, and then to continue talking and, and see, you know, continue to have communication with the township in terms of what's moving forward. Um, so I'm gonna run through these questions and I don't wanna sit real, and talk with you. I, yeah, go. I'll go, I'll just go real quick background a little bit. Um, so this map's a little bit small, sorry about that. Actually, I do have a couple um, I can pass around. Just give you a little bit of what we're talking about here. Um, you just pass that around. Um, but just for clarification, um, what we're talking about doing, um, and I'll move this up closer. Um, um, so basically, um, like we've been saying, we'll, let's start over here at Wagner Road. This section of road was paved, I believe, in 1988. I was at the Road Commission in 1988. Um, I was involved in paving of Wagner Road back in 1988. And the neighbors on Park Ridge said, hey, we'd like to get this road paved to um, the township administration at that time. I think there was a special assessment district set up back in 1988. All I know is I was paving it. I wasn't involved in all those details back then. And this piece of road got paved to here. This piece of Lauren Tide and, and uh, Park Ridge, I'm not sure when that got paved, tell you the truth. I'm guessing before then, I really don't know, but I wasn't involved in that. Um, so the plan is to pulverize this pavement. It's 30 years old, 30 some years old. This I think is older than that. Um, it's beyond its useful life. It's sort of like your roof. You know, your roof is made out of asphalt. Roads are made out of asphalt. They have a useful life. This is beyond its useful life. Obviously this section is a lot worse than this section. So you could potentially, we could what we call mill and fill. It's like three inches of asphalt, three or four inches of asphalt out there probably now. You could mill off the inch, top inch or two and put down a new surface, which will probably buy about 10 years or so. What we're recommending is rototilling, basically pulverizing existing pavement, which basically chews that up, 
turns it into gravel, then putting two courses of asphalt on it. So that's what we do for this first piece um, from Wagner. Same thing with Laurentide. Pulverize that, turn it into gravel, compact that down to, to two courses of asphalt on it. So sort of repave the road. So then you're talking 20, 25 years of service life out of that. Um, so we want you know, to make it as long as service life as possible. Pieces in the middle is a gravel section. So um, what we're looking to do is called gravel resurfacing. Um, sounds like that road is sort of established. I'm not going to say built um, in the 70, early 70s, 67, 70. It was turned over to the road commission. Um, now, obviously, since that time, a lot of homes have gone in. I guess they're required to put driveway culverts in because, like I said, there's quite a few driveway culverts. But as we walk the road, you can see some of the areas. Um, there's trees now growing in the ditches, um, some of the spots, not a whole lot, but that's what, a couple of areas we walked as we're like, well, these trees are gonna have to come out because they're actually right now where the ditch used to be. Um, I mean, they're smaller trees, uh, but the reestablished, you're gonna have to take some, you know, see a few of the spot ditches out. So put gravel on probably six, some areas, eight inches of limestone, same material that's used on Craig Road. Um, it's called a crushed limestone, 23 crushed limestone, comes from Monroe. It's out of a quarry. Um, limestone lasts better than natural aggregate, just holds up better. So yeah, um, on a, a busy road, you can generally get 10 years out of it, like on an East Delhi, um, West Delhi, those type of roads that get quite a bit more traffic. This road, I don't see a problem with 20 years. Um, it should last. Um, so reestablish the drainage, put the stone down, um, do some minor ditching. We'll have to do some tree climbing, um, trimming up top the camp called the canopy because they're going to have trucks and equipment going up and down that road do the work and some of those trees are too low so we're just going to have to trim those to open that up um, just so they can actually do the work um, so that's some of the stuff that would be involved in it um, it'd be coordinated like i said with the road commission and i know people ask about craig why was and craig was done two years ago i think and that was paid for with the township wide special assessment district and that was, that's the $85 a year you're paying. And that was to do all the collector roads, the roads that connect like East Delhi, West Delhi. And actually Craig Road is a section line road. It went from Maple Road to Wagner Road. Some years ago, like a couple, quite a few decades ago, it washed out, it was never fixed. But actually that road is still, if you, you walk through there, you can sort of see the, there's remnants of a road and Craig Road is technically a section line road. So it's supposed to be connected between Wagner and Maple. Um, I'm not sure if that's ever going to happen again, but that's why the township funded that piece because it's a section line road, just like the other roads that were done with the uh, money. So that's why that's funded. And the, the question always is, so, you know, I, I, I live in South Township and I'm always educating. I live in a neighborhood here. It's like, well, we pay taxes. Why aren't our roads being fixed? Like, you know, in other areas, like in Ann Arbor, different areas. Well, end of the day, 1951, Act 51 was passed by the state legislature. That determined how roads were funded in Michigan. So back then they decided that local roads and subdivisions were gonna to have to be funded 50% by locals and the other funding would potentially could come to the road commission. End of the day though, when they funded roads, road commission gets about $3,000 per year, per mile to fix the maintain your local subdivision road. My local subdivision road, like anyone who lives on a subdivision or a local road. So really, when you do the winter maintenance, do some grading, dust control, the township pays for the dust control, um, that stuff, that eats up $3,000. So when it comes to improving a road, there's no really money left over. So that's why it comes to the townships. Some townships have a township-wide millage. Some townships have a special assessment district. Some take it out of their general fund. The local roads are underfunded in this state. Um, and here again, I just saw a um, statistic. Michigan still has the worst roads in the nation. And people always ask, why is that? We spend about the lowest amount of money of any state in the nation. And always people go, why well, when I go to Ohio, they have better roads. Mm -hmm. Ohio's, their gas tax has always been higher. Um, we have a sales tax. That's why gas is cheaper sometimes in Ohio than in Michigan. At the end of the day, um, our gas tax used to be like 19 cents for like 30 years. Um, Ohio's was like 26 cents. They also had a toll road. So they were spending a billion dollars more per year on their road system. They had the same miles of road as Michigan. So they've been doing that for 30 years. They've been investing $30 billion more into their road network than Michigan has. So when Governor Whitmer said, oh, we'd like to spend $3, million, $3 billion more 
I mean, that's a good start, but Ohio has been spending, you know, so we're now we're only down $27 billion. Um, so we'll probably never catch up. And so not that, not that it's a competition, but that's always a question. Like, why are roads? Because we're Michigan, that's been a priority, that hasn't been a priority is funding roads. So that's why we're here today, figuring out, is there a solution? I think the solution potentially is, you know, if you're interested in doing a special assessment district is a way. Um, and like I said, this one was, a I'm pretty sure, I'm certain this was a township special assessment district done in 1988. The roads committee that was formed in 2011 or 12, I was involved with it when I was at the road commission. And since that point, we've done probably 20 other subdivision roads with special assessment districts. Um, Wing Meadows right across the street, but that was one of the first ones. Polo Fields, Uplands, um, Honey Creek is another subdivision off of Pratt Road. That was a gravel subdivision. Liberty Hills, another gravel subdivision. So there's been gravel subdivisions done with special assessment district and paved subdivisions in South Township done with special assessment district. So the new committee that just started now a year or so ago, this will be one of our first special assessment districts, but the township has been doing special assessment districts for, you know, at this point, 30 or 40 years on and off over time. So that's, I just want to give you a little bit of detail. Um, like I said, I've done them at the road commission. I'm no longer at the road commission, but I've done enough of these. I know a little bit of uh, the process. So at this point, I'll open it up to any questions or Amy, you want to just run through some of the questions yeah. that people have sent in. So I think a lot of them, hopefully we've answered, but there are some we haven't. So one of them to put you on the spot since sure. you're there is, um, I think obviously one of the historical concerns is trees. Mm -hmm. So is there any way a homeowner would know before the process starts, what will happen to their? Yeah, I think when we walked it with the road commission, generally we, we go out and mark those trees, you know, put a pink dot or some kind of dot on them. So identify what trees we're talking about. Um, so it's no surprises. So you'll know, okay, these are the trees we're talking about. So that's what, um, there were a few people now, I think you remember trees as we walked it, some people had planted flowers or different things close to the road, which will probably have to be removed. They can be relocated by the property owner if they want. Um, Cause basically the road right of way is I believe 66 feet, generally it's 33 feet either side of the center line. So that's technically the road's right of way. This is road commission. So really you shouldn't plant things in there. Um, obviously people have, and it's not that big a deal, but now we're gonna reestablish ditches. Some of the, the small stuff will have to be relocated, um, but we can go ahead and mark the trees. And like, I'm, I'm thinking six trees, yeah, eight there trees. Yeah, there were not a lot. Um, most of them are smaller. When we walked the road, didn't you say 20 feet was what you were looking for? Do I remember that correctly? Yeah, so that's about the width that we're trying to reestablish the road width. It's about 20 to 22 feet. That's about how wide. And if you go back to where the pavement is, you kick back the grass that's grown over, that's about how wide that pavement was. It's about 22 feet um, back when the paved in 88. But that's what we're trying to reestablish the road. And if you measure between the driveway, that's about what the space that was when it was the road, I'm guessing. Where are the ditches going to be? Well, then the ditches would be on that point. I mean, are there, is there everywhere there's not a ditch, is there going to be a ditch? Most areas, sometimes if it's a crest, you know, if you're at a high point, you really wouldn't need much of a ditch because um, you're breaking, let's say it's going to go to the north and to the south or to the east or the west. So at that point, it's just going to be this shallow ditch. But then as you go away from it, it's going to go down because it's got to be low enough to get into those driveway culverts. It's going to go underneath the people's driveways. So I'd say the majority of yes. Some areas, if the road's up higher, it may not be necessary for a ditch because the road, the grade just falls off. So it'll just fall off, let's say, towards the river, I think near, near Walnut, maybe. I don't know. Somewhere up in there. It, yeah, there's an area that the road's higher and the other side, it just sort of falls off. So you really don't need a ditch because it's just sort of falling off naturally. Now, the ditches, are, I mean, I asked earlier, but are, are they going to, you know, you're right to say that, you know, we have to maintain the ditch, the culvert and all that. Well, it's hard to maintain a ditch if it's not mowable. I mean, I, you know, I have to make a running jump to get in my mom's ditch because it's like mm -hmm. this. Is there some way that that can be addressed? Generally, we would try to slope them back, but the, the other challenge as you open that ditch back, so let's say the ditch is like this, you know, pretty steep. Um, so if you try to flatten it out like that, so it is mobile, you could get into more trees. 
So that's sort of the trade-off. If, I mean, if we don't take out, you know, if there's not trees there, then it's easier to lay it back and open it up. But if there's a tree in someone's front yard, you know, you but keep see, it. That, they've got to be maintainable, though. I mean, right. we're not trying to be argumentative. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying if we're going to maintain them, we've got to be able to, I don't know, do something that would allow it not to get all plugged up again. Right. Whatever. And I guess the main thing about being maintained is your, your driveway culvert, you know, don't put your leaves in the ditch. I mean, some people are like, oh, just fill the, you know, that's what people do over time. They dump all their leaves in the ditch, and over time, it plugs up the culvert. So those are the things as far as maintenance. Um, you know, we don't expect you to go buy it, rent a backhoe and start digging out the ditch, but the routine stuff, it's like, you know, you see your culverts getting plugged in the fall, clean out those leaves, because obviously there's a lot of trees out there, the leaves. Maybe at the, in some course of this work, we could all find out how to get a, 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 a a culvert blown out. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't just get in the phone book and find it. Right. And so the the grow commission has one of right. Those yeah, issues. a back truck, and that that's what we'll do as part of the projects: clean out all those culverts, and get them reestablished, get them working again, functioning. But again. then we have to maintain it after that. So I'm just trying to get the tools that people need to understand right. to maintain. Them. Right. Initially, it's going to be a shovel just in the fall, and just to get the leaves out. Because really, that's what usually plugs up initially but then as tree over time that you know a few leaves a few more dirt a little bit yeah so we can do it on an annual basis it really shouldn't get plugged because if the water's flowing it also serves some about self-cleaning too okay and we shouldn't have dirt flowing into it like we do now right okay. i mean ours is pretty much level with the street because all of the dirt from the road has yeah. just completely right. gone in but that shouldn't happen right if the water is properly flowing and i agree the, and that's what yeah, right. when you go about six inches in the bottom of mom's, mm -hmm. and that will cause her yard to flood. Yeah. Right. So, and that's a good thing about the limestone. It will lock together, they'll compact it with a roller, and it'll tighten up, and it will get compact. Because right now, a lot of your road is more like a dirt road. It's really not much gravel, and not just no limestone. So, that's why it's somewhat washing away, too. Um, so, and some of the areas, all the water in some areas is going into one ditch. So the first thing we're going to do is split the water. So half the water goes in this ditch, half the water goes in. So you're already splitting, you know, reducing the water bottom on one side by 50%. Thank you. Regarding the, uh, regarding the ditches, the, uh, after the road was turned over to the uh, county uh, 50 years ago, the, you're right, the county has never, ever stuck a shovel in a ditch in the 50 years. <laughs> never. Um, and the homeowners have not seen fit to maintain the ditches. We had a hard enough time before it was turned over to the county getting people to contribute for the gravel and the snow removal and stuff like that, which was one of the main, that's one of the reasons that it got turned over to the county in the first place. Now, her comments are that how do you maintain the ditch? Is there some reason why if those ditches are, you go down with the gray wall or something and you reestablish all the ditches, is there some reason why based on the performance over the last 50 years, the homeowners don't like doing it and the county <laughs> won't do it. Uh, is there some way that a portion of the fee that you establish for this could go toward the county annually cleaning the ditch? If, if you don't take the leaf, a one-year leaf drop almost will make the ditches unfunctional. Two years and the ditches down here gone because we're, we're talking about narrow ditches. Is there some way as part of this SAD that you could have an annual fee attached to this where the county would then clean the ditches and that would also, if there was an annual fee, uh, if the county didn't do it, it would give us some legal bit because we would have been paying for something we didn't get and we could have to know our taxes. I mean, if, and then of course you call it clerk. You, no, that's you can get more um, people involved in it. Is there some way of a good request? I, I don't, I, I'm not, I'm not the road commission you can, and actually, of all the 31 years I worked for the road commission, no one ever asked me that question. So, <laughs> back on the so well, based, but, on past, based on past experience, no, I, I understand. Don't, like she doesn't, right. she, she can't mow a narrow ditch. And, right. and a lot of people aren't going to get out there with a shovel mm -hmm. and a wheelbarrow right. and, and clean it all out. So is there some way, is there some way if you want to grow the last thing? We're writing these down. So that's, you know, we can't answer that tonight, but we'll write that down and try to get an answer. So, I mean, that, that is a solution. A I, solution. I, think it would so, be a, I think it would be one that would take the onus off the individual owners to, to have to try to maintain the ditch. And, and then if it can be done in a continuous way, then you, then you, that's what you need to keep the road dry. You get the ditches have got to be exactly. continuous. If one person doesn't clean it, now you got a mess. Now the water's out on the road and it's going to erode the surface. Right on. 
Um, cost. So there was a question about the cost. Yeah, it sounds, looks now. like there's a number put together in 2016, 2017. The whole project could have been done then for about $270,000. Right. Um, so material costs in the last five to seven years have gone up about 50%. So if you add 50% to this 270, you're about $400,000. So that's really what it is. Asphalt prices, limestone prices, a lot of those material costs are going up 10% a year. Um, so that's that's probably what it is. Um, I don't have the breakdown, but that's that's what the cost of materials have gone up substantially. Um, obviously, the cost of fuel has gone up, you know, double than last year. Obviously, from sixteen to now. Um, so that's what it really ends up being: is the material cost have increased substantially. Can you break out the cost between doing the east side, the west side, and the in between for us? So fair. I don't have that number. Okay, well, I need that. I want to see what who we're paying for. Well, we're, we're talking about doing one project. I'm not. I understand, but I mean, they were split out in the original uh, poll. It was done in 2017 between the east end, the west end, and the unpaved section. Right. The paved section, the repulverized and repaved, is about $350,000 a mile. Okay, the quarter of a mile. That's, that's it's a little bit longer than a quarter mile, but yeah. That's what, that's what the last survey said. It's a quarter of a mile. Well, when I picked GIS, had a little bit longer, but when I did it. Yeah, just these are numbers that came from you. So. I didn't come from me, but I don't know where they came yeah. from. from your department. Okay. But so, yeah, so that's where it's about 350000 a mile. So, a quarter of that be so. So, this was saying, um, and the other thing was a mill overlay. Back then, now we're pulverizing. What's the difference? We're going to pulverize it, which you're going to go down and you're going to put two cores of asphalt on. Like I said, so you, it's, it's more extensive than Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Um, just one thing that I want to say is that we're, our folks on Zoom also have questions to ask. So, we want to get you folks <laughs> to ask all your questions. Um, and Amy has a couple of questions that she has from uh, that people wrote in, but the Zoom people also have some questions. Yeah, so let me finish. Let me let me do a couple more, and then we'll we'll let Zoom folks no. ask. Um, so the the other questions that I received were basically about the process and voting. So I just want to be clear about this as much as possible. So there is no actual vote of the neighborhood. The way it works is that there's a petition. Correct me if I'm wrong, right? And if 70% of households, and if you are a household and you have more than one person on your deed, then both people have to sign in order for your household to be included. If 70% of households agree, sign the petition, then it gets presented to the board and the board votes itself on whether to do the project. There's never a time where the neighborhood is asked yes or no. It is all based on, on petition. So it's it's not, it, so by not signing, by default, it's a no, right? So. Um, hmm, interesting, because last time we had over 10% of the people that didn't respond to the survey that we took. That was, that would be enough well, to swing the vote a lot. Right. I mean, the neighborhood really has to want to have this take place for it to take what place. What happens when you can't get the, the nice people that did the prior survey in 2016 and 17 canvassed all the, all the properties and there were people that just didn't respond. So yeah, well, we'll, we'll, we'll that's cross built that in bridge when it comes to it and see what we can do. That's considered a no then or what? Yeah, it'd be a no. You can't get a hold of them. It's, well, a no. it's not a no in the last survey. I'm just saying some of it was yes, some of it was no. The whole the last process we, is gone. So whatever that process was, there I don't know what a survey was. I don't know what I was never surveyed. I was asked to sign something at some point and a signature was either put down or not. Right. Um, our process, according to the township, is if you're in favor of the township moving forward, you sign the petition. And if we have 70%, then we can submit the petition to the board and the board 
will vote themselves on whether to follow through. And it's, it's that simple. Here, and your emphasis on transparency is very good because there was aspects, as I understand it, the last time where some people were said, told one thing and some people were told something else. And, and that didn't really wind up, I guess, really advocating for any particular process to go forward. So the transparency thing is very appreciated. Thank you. We're trying. <laughs> um, and this is related to that, which is how will the township communicate the SAD process to parcel owners? Will, where, will there be minutes of public, public meetings? So starting tonight and moving forward, all of our meetings are being recorded. Yep. And they will all be posted to the, the committee, road committee. The road advisory. The road advisory yeah. committee website so they can be watched at any time. And then if it's a if it's when the board is voting and if it's a board hearing, those are also recorded and posted on the township website. So any conversations about this, you should there should be a public hearing notice that you should receive by mail and it will be recorded. The other thing I think is that there is a sign in sheet that has your email. That's another way. It's not the official way of a US mail, but it is helpful um, for Amy and others. If you have their email, so sometimes in today's world, you can get you know emails down and it's easier to get information out to people, communication. Obviously, the official way through the township will be US mail because that's what happens, that's the way the process is required. So and if there are people here who want to be more involved, and if we don't get to 70%, we're gonna need some foot soldiers. We would, you know, we're just here to get this process started, and we really would like this to be a neighborhood project. We'd like to avoid some of the controversy and mess that happened previously by being transparent. Let's get questions out. Let's figure out what's best um, and let's work together, hopefully to get something done. Um, so those are the questions so I had. Three more questions, questions, questions three or four. Yeah, let's these folks. Yep. Go ahead. Wanna, Maybe one more question. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, we're in a 16 and 17 SAD. We were assessed $599 for an engineering survey of the road. None of us ever got the results. What? That was engineering sorry, plans. The engineering wasn't here. I'd like to ask them the question, not necessarily you. Right. My understanding is. The township hired Washington Engineering, which is a local engineering firm. They went out and did some survey information, prepared some plans, and that was the cost that they. Um, well, sure there is a set of plans. I have seen the set of plans. Do you want to come in? I can show you the set of plans. Well, that'd be great. But I mean, that's what paid for. We all should have those plans, don't you think? It's, it's a piece question. of paper. I'm not sure. <laughs> that's one that well, a lot of people didn't want because there's no taking... more money in, in engineering costs, right? Right, that's correct. I'm working. I don't. I'm, I'm a volunteer. We're volunteers here. No, 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 the road commission. That um, just asking the right. No, and that's the, why this process was the plan to go through the road commission and have their right. people. And there is no more engineering costs. Okay, right, right. none. Thank you. Yeah. Um, um, I just measured from the midline of the road to one side or the other side, and it's about ten feet, which means the road now. Where we live, which is right next to Amy, we live on Bay Ridge, um, is about 20 feet in width. Now, somebody, I think it was Amy, measured and said that she's the road's going to look like Craig Road. Well, Craig Road is a lot wider than so. If that's what you're thinking about, then you've got to be cutting trees down. No, we're, we're talking 20 to 22 feet. That's what we're not going to make it any one. It's going to be about the same width as it is now. Correct. Twenty to twenty-two feet. We walked it, measured it. I had a tape measure and walking it. Well, and, that's good. Yeah. When we say light Craig Road, we, we mean a limestone. Not we mean the, the, the way width. it would. No, we no. don't mean the width. The Just road. the limestone. Yeah. Right. I understand. Okay. Thank you. I'm guessing before Craig Road was done, it probably was that wide. No, it wasn't. But I'd be close to that because I don't think they. Move everything out that wide, did they? I don't know, but we're not going to. We're not worried about Craig Road. Your road, yeah, we walked it. The plan is because we're not taking out people's driveways. We're, you know, we're putting it back to where right. it was in 1970, I guess. There, there is one area though where, which is the paved area. Like if you go around the paved bend, and you like, like Roy was saying, if you kick it with your foot, there's pavement. There's 
inches and inches of pavement that's covered up by grass. So it's not taking out landscaping or trees, it's just clearing off that roadway and repaving it so that we actually have a 20 foot yeah. roadway for past. Asphalt pavement is about 22 feet. But, uh, question, in respect to the culvert, in places that I know, there, the culvert is on one side of the road and there is no culvert on the other side of the road. Under this proposal, would culverts be on both sides of the road beyond the 22 feet of the road? Yeah, we'll reestablish the ditches and put in culverts. Surprisingly, though, when we walk that, the side that doesn't look like this culverts, if you kick around, there's culverts in a lot of those driveways. Probably 60, 70% have culverts that are just buried. Um, but if there's not a culvert there today and it's not at a high point, we're going to have to put the, that's what part of the cost is put some culverts in certain people's driveway. And, and to do that, at least on my property, it, you would you would have to take some of my frontage. The road right away. Yeah. yeah. And which is very tree lined. What if you don't want it ditch in front of your property? Well, I guess we need to reestablish drainage. So I, I can't, I can't, I don't know where you live and I don't, you know, so. so we have to reestablish to get the water off the road. Like I said, it's like a roof. So if you don't get the water off the road, you're sort of wasting your money. Um, it's sort of like, you know, so that's, that's- I guess the question I would have is how much additional frontage would you have to take in order to put the culvert in on the side where there is no culvert? It's gonna vary case to case, but here again, what we're talking about is working within that road right of way. So the road right-of-way is generally about 33 feet. The road is 10 feet, so we, there's another 20 feet that's technically road right-of-way. So that's where the work would be within that 20 feet area beyond the road, beyond the, the gravel. I don't know if you live in the gravel area or the paved area. We do the gravel there. Yeah. My question is, the last time we went through this, the road commission was very specific that they had standards that had to be met and that standard was a lot wider than 20 feet. That's why we walked the whole road with the road commission and they agreed since we're doing a gravel resurfacing, we'll, we'll match what's out there from 19. So, the, so there's <laughs> that, was, that was for paving. Right. So the issue with the road commission was that, that the, the original request to the engineering company was to give us an estimate and engineering plan for paving the road. And so what the road commission said is, if you're gonna pave the road, it has to be much wider to meet our standard and we are not gonna give you an exemption. This is my understanding. Right, We're not talking road. about paving. We're right. upgrading the road by paving it so it's gonna be wider. Mm -hmm. This is, we're working, we're just resurfacing the existing road. But then the other question I have, I think it's on Laurentide, there was a section on the road that was pretty bad. And I don't know if the homeowners did it themselves, but they had a lot of limestone gravel put on that bad section. So I don't know, is it possible for homeowners to have that? Probably the road commission, they will put spot limestone. I really do homeowners buy one. I mean, I, I don't really know what happened out there. I'm, I guess you can ask. But it really corrected the problem for that section of the road. So I was just wondering if, the, if that's an option for people, if there is an area that's troublesome to them. That that's what this project is. We're trying to do the whole. I know, but what I'm saying is they just did the troubled area of the road. They didn't do the whole thing, but they did a really good job of. I guess walking it, I think most of the gravel portion of the road's in pretty bad shape. It's not like it's just one spot or two spots. I mean, I walked the whole thing and most of the, there's, there's no gravel out there anymore. And what do you do about water coming off a driveway? I guess it'd be a case by case. Ideally, your driveway's supposed to go back. If your driveway comes out, I guess it'll come out and we'll make it go into the ditch. On either side of your house, I, don't, I guess. Like I said, you're asking specific questions, and like I said, I, we don't know where you live or your driveway here. Right here. Yeah. 
if you built these culverts and had them all cleaned out and everything, where would the water end up? In the river. In the, in the river. river. In the I mean, there's river. outlets. Yeah. We're going to make it so it creates positive drainage, so it drains where sheet flows into the river. Some of it goes um, down Woodley, and I think there's a uh, drain goes down Woodley that goes across. Um, yeah. Yeah, eventually. But there, right. there are water systems that go from Park Ridge down to the river. They're just not functional now because the whole water system is broken down. When you say system, it's more like a surface. It's going to get off and just run across the surface. It's not like a storm sewer. It's just yeah. rose, flows across the surface and then it drops off and goes towards the river. Thank you. So a uh, couple of points. Number one, I think we have a major problem. It's not Park Ridge problem. It's uh, Walnut. And when the first drop of rain falls on the top of Park Ridge, we already have a major problem with all the water shooting up. I assume you guys looked at this, but just, just to make you aware, that's got to be fixed because we have right up there those top top sections of Park Ridge is a big problem already, but there's hardly any water falling on Park Ridge. Secondly, Amy, you mentioned um, some areas where there's bad visibility. What, what are we talking about there? Are we talking about the, the curves in the road, or is it a, the spot halfway down where there's and what's going to be done there? Are we going to cut some of the vegetation needs to be put pulled back. Pulled yeah, it's back. just vegetation that's growing out, not of trees, but mainly just vegetation that's grown back out into the roadway. I mean, I'm thinking about I live at the, the left hand side of this diagram just before the pavement. I'm on the corner of Libby. Okay. Uh, yeah. And there's that the curve there before you get back to Wagner, which you really have pretty poor visibility. Yeah. And the way yeah. it takes is to cut all the spruce trees down, sure. which I, I wouldn't want to see done. Right. No, that's not the intent. No, no, I think it's the I think it's the other side and and maintain re or re maintaining that road, which is again, if you walk that road and you look at how ro where the the pavement actually begins yeah. and ends, it's pretty overgrown. Okay, I just want to make sure we're not like doing a lot of cutting. So I get this uh, the, at the very top of the hill as well, where the visibility is four around the other big end, right where Walnut comes in. Yeah, uh, and again. Uh, you're coming down, I think there's pine trees up there, but I mean, so the intent is not to destroy the landscaping there to create visibility. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can also trim pine trees too. Yeah. I walk the road and actually they have, um, they're planning when they walk the road to have those ditches in front of the Walmart to yeah. be able to take care of the water so it doesn't come down. They're well aware yeah, yeah. of the fact that what you're concerned there's with a storm the water right there. just comes running down yeah. the road. The storm drain doesn't function at all. Right. There was a lot of discussion right in front of your house. There was a lot of looking at in yeah. Front of my house or in front of up at up at Walnut. Walnut. Up at Walnut. Walnut. Yeah. On Walnut. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On that corner. Yeah. yeah that corner. Very aware of it. Yeah. But anyway, my my major concern is going to be about uh, aesthetics. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd I'd like to see the road left uh, as is as possible in terms of width and landscaping. It's pretty much will will be left as is. I mean, as much as it can be. Um, that's the goal. That's totally our goal. Um, Jillian just brought up a very important point that I don't want to be missed. Um, it's the, a financial important part of this is there will be a second meeting. After the second meeting, if people object to this, um, there will be a 30 day period where they can come before the tax tribunal. Michigan tax tribunal. Michigan Tax Tribunal, <laughs> but they only have 30 days after the second meeting to um, bring up their concerns, their complaints, whatever. So I want everybody to know that, that there is a way, a process that you can use um, if you object to any of this in terms of your own um, assessment. So, but 30 days only. I'll go to you then. Well, we use quite the right terms, but it sounds like we, as, as the property owners, essentially own the project because we fund it. But how do we assure that the hang on, this is several conversations going on, so sorry, okay. um, the, the project gets executed. Who is then accountable for the performance? So, that this that worst case scenario we spend them four or five hundred grand, first heavy rain comes, and the, the, Things still flood. So how how does the accountability work? How does how does is there some sort of remedy process in the event that the work is done doesn't actually meet its objective? Well, the road commission 
does hundreds of miles of roads every year. And in, in Wasilla Township, we've done all 30 miles of local collect, collect roads in the last 10 years. Um, so they, they they know what they're doing. Obviously, if there's a big rain event, yeah. and you know, someone gets, you know, they have equipment to take care of it. Um, so I guess, I mean, if you don't have confidence in them doing the work, that's fine. I mean, I think they've done this before. It's not their first in rodeo. Um, but yeah, if there's a big rain event, a big some storm, or something they thought the water was supposed to go this way, obviously they take that information. Um, you know, I'm not, I can't speak on behalf of the road commission, but they stand behind their work. If there's problems, they're gonna go out and take care of it. I mean, if it's something minor, um, like there's, you know, some gravel pebbles in their cul your culvert, they're not gonna come out. But if something isn't really working, it's creating a problem, yeah, they'll, they'll stay in kind of here again. We could ask them, we did invite them to the meeting, but they had other commitments. Um, but I mean, they work for the township every year. The township hires a road commission. They probably do a half a million dollars worth of work every year for the township on other projects. So it's a good working relation. And that's been going on for 40 years. Road commission isn't going anywhere. The township's not going anywhere. So I think those are your reassurances. Will there be a time in the process when we can see how the new work will affect our frontage? Yeah. Will they put tape out or something to say we're going to cut here before? Just thinking about uh, 20, 22 foot wide plus culverts, I don't know how much that comes into the part of the yard. I right. I mean, the tricky part is you're sort of asking, do you want plans or engineering plans? And, and we said, we're not going to spend that money. We're just going to sort of build it. So that's sort of the tricky part is um, they're going to build it, but they're not really going to develop engineering plans. They're going to build it based on how they've done the other 30 miles in Sio Township and the other 200 miles. And, you know, sort of like, you know, we're going to reestablish. So I guess the easy way to do it is um, the road's going to be at 20, 22 feet. Plus culverts. Plus culverts, which we could go another 10 to 15 feet out to create positive drainage. So but that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to. Right. So explain a right of way, which I'm not sure. Right. That so the road right of way, either side of that is 33 feet from the road. So that's road with commission. Right. They can go in there tomorrow and do whatever they want because it's technically the road's right of way. Um, but that's where, I mean, you can look at where you, if there's a driveway culvert there or your neighbor has a driveway culvert, that's where the ditch is going to be. So let's say if this is the edge of the road, go out there and look and if you find the culvert, the culvert's over here, the new ditch is going to be right here. So we do some grading on this side of the ditch and some grading on the back side of the ditch. So that's where you're going to get an idea of where the new ditch is going to be. Well, the unknown is always a worry. Right. And it would be nice to have, before I vote it, to have some kind of preview. Mm -hmm. Well, or the tape or something like that. If they're going to cut a new ditch, somebody's going to have to be sitting there going, well, cut it this deep and forth slope this and back slope that. Right. I mean, we're going to tie into their existing culverts. And generally, the culverts are going to be about, so it's going to be about a two foot deep ditch. The culvert's a 12 inch culvert. And generally, you want to put a cover over that culvert. So generally, it's about a two foot deep ditch. Roy, do you think it would be reasonable? And if not, that's fine. For, for us to have like a walk, a, an identified time for a walkthrough with, doesn't have to be six people, but so that people, you know, we could say we're going to be walking through the neighborhood the street this time, if you want to get a sense of what's going to happen on your property, be home and we'll, is that crazy? Uh, we, we can ask for a question, I'm not sure. I mean, it is also winter, which means no yeah. event. So that's, I mean, that's true. That's where, you know, it's, it's, it's harder for them to predict what they're going to be doing next Tuesday or two weeks from Tuesday. Um, Cause you know, it snowed a little bit just yesterday. So that's good. And I understand. So sort of like, I know, <laughs> yeah. Um, you'd like to see what's going to be the impact. At this point, we're sort of running out of season um, as far as getting out there and looking at all these details. I get it. If it's your front yard, what's it, what's it going to look like when it's done? Which I think um, more than one person has brought up. Um, Let me just, just for a minute interrupt. Um, anyone on Zoom right now who wants to ask a question, um, if you could just like raise your hand and we can get to you, uh, that would be terrific. The other thing is this question. How do I raise my hand? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> the other thing is, if you think of something and you leave here, there is the email address. So email at 
your questions in and we can get response back that way too. So you leave here tonight and you get home. It's like, oh, what about this? That's what the whole email address um, that Lisa and Amy are going to do. So Jillian, sounds like there is someone that would like to oh, yeah, we ask have a question. question. And there's okay. some that are on queue. So okay, gonna... great. Um, let's go with the Q&A questions for chat first, and then the, the raise hands, um, and some of them are the same. Can I make a quick, <laughs> a quick comment? So as people, I know it's getting late, people need to leave. So we do have some printed kind of uh, summary of what we talked about, which you're welcome to take. And there are also copies of the petition if you feel like you're ready to sign it. Also on this page, there is, if you decide later you want to sign the petition, here's the email for us. So you can email us and we'll figure out how to get it to you. So. Wait, tell me, I think we're ready. There is, um, Philip Rogers has asked, does the cost include the grinding paving at both ends of the sewer? Yes. Yes. Okay. There's some Craig Road questions that I answered. I don't know those, uh, but it was a connect road at the time. Uh, here's Nancy Rodriguez, and I can't see the oh, uh, Galano. Was there any maintenance to paint parts once paved? I guess those two ends, um, because they, they do fall apart. Do you know if there was any maintenance? In the 30 years, I do not believe so. Tom, was there any maintenance? Only the innumerable cold patch and dirt. Okay. <laughs> the patches. Just scrolling down here. Is the is the road deteriorating or is it not being maintained like other natural roads? If yes, where is the report? So okay, is the road deteriorating or is it not being maintained like other natural roads? All roads deteriorate, so I think, I mean, this road is, some areas is 35 years old, the paved road, the gravel sounds like 50 years old, um, so I think it's, it's past its useful life. I don't, you, as you say, lack of maintenance is really just beyond, it's like your roof, it's beyond useful life. And then, um, were, are there reports of which roads, not, not connector roads, we already have that schedule, but of other roads that the township or the road commission maintains like snow and um, snow removal and what's it, um, brine, dust for dust. Yeah, they track when they put brine on, they track when they, um, and actually there's a paving index, they go out in every couple of years and evaluate pavements. Um, so that's done by the road commission. So that those reports are available at the road commission Everybody. website under um, township tab. Three, and here, three applications of brine each season. Mm -hmm. Is there a report that correlates home values in this area to the road? From what has been cited in the past, a natural road like Park Ridge has aided in increasing home values. I don't know what yeah. do they mean by natural road. I think there, there's a gravel, not paved. But well, the plant, it's still gonna be a natural road when we're done. We're not paving it, so I'm not right, sure. Right, right, so they're asking. So there, there was a question emailed about like, is this is this um, investment actually going to increase the value of our home? Is that true? Like that's an assumption, but is that actually true? That would be an assessor question. I mean, the thirty years I've been doing this, if you're going to try to sell your house, and let's say you lived on a piece of Laurentide, if someone came out and looked at your house, and the road looked like that, and they like, say, "Oh, you have a beautiful house, which most of these homes out there are really nice," and then you went like that another neighborhood, a similar house on a better road, is it? better chance that person is going to say, I think I like that other house because it's on a better road. You know, is there a number that says it's going to increase your value of this certain percent, certain dollars? No. But I mean, maybe some people like living on bad roads. Then they're like, hey, I, I want to live on Lauren's you know? <laughs> I mean, but generally people like, you know, living on better roads. But. The proposal addresses water drainage. Are there drainage issues for the road or for personal property? The improvements are for the road, the drainage. I mean, if someone has a drainage problem in their front yard, side yard, backyard, that's we're not trying to correct those. We're trying to for the road road purposes. Is there a report that addresses the road drainage issue? That's a that would be through the water 
resources. Not really, it's not really a report. I don't think anyone does this. A report that I'm aware of. The question is being asked because of the historically understood drainage issue that are inherent to homes on the river side of the road. Well, on the back side, their backyards drop way off towards the road, but we're, we're not working out there. We're in the, their front yard, so I'm not sure exactly what they're referring to. Um, is consideration of the proposal in consideration of the proposal is there a portion of funds that will go to those homeowners that have already invested in resolving drainage issues on their property the question is being asked in support of those who have already invested um, thousands of dollars on drainage for their property i don't believe so i've never i mean i don't think i don't know how the township would you know yeah, it's and that's usually drained the those if it's a um, large drainage issue that would go through the Washtenaw County Road Commission, um, not commission, um, drainage commission, yeah, water resource commission. Resources. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, is there a proposal or a plan for improving the road as a natural road? So this is what we've been talking about: is the gravel uplift that is, I think, it, um, meaning addressing any deterioration and narrowing of the road as it exists today and keeping it natural beauty. Well, I think this has been covered. Okay. Um, at $7,000 per parcel, per parcel and any unplanned coverages, is there any statistic, statistical data that shows it is a good investment? So that again goes back to the value of your property and that would be an assessing question, but also improving your road and all, um, all the issues that have been um, talked about for years here, um, investing in, again, I, I don't live there and I'm not promoting this. It's just that if you, um, you, it's up to you if you value your road and improving it, but then there's also the question of does that in, um, raise the value of your property. So it's kind of a two-parted yeah. question. Not to mention, do you value your car? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of damage being done to cars on this road. Has the proposed plan taken into consideration the increase in vehicle speed due to being paved and, so, and the increase in risk to residents, their children, and their pets? And the road is not going to be paved. It's going to be only the parts that are already paved and that, that would be repaved. Does the proposal outline any environmental impacts related to the off gases of the paving material other than potential health effects? So that would again be only those two parts and they're already paved. And I don't think that the material has changed much. No, no same no, material okay. for 70 years. 70 years. Seven, <laughs> seven zero, yeah. Okay. Have Similar. you conducted a study on the, on the through road increase that may or will occur with a paved connection between Maple Road and Wagner. Here again, we're not paving it. They, they yeah, must think we were paving it. The intent is not to pave, but we're going to repave what's paved and re-gravel what's gravel. Yeah, and I think that this may be um, from the past, mm -hmm. 2016. On Craig Road, uh, the road is better and driver's speed. No one goes 25 and there's a, is no, there are no regulations of this. How do you protect the walkers and bikers on Park Ridge when you widen the road? Um, uh, widening the road always increases speed and traffic, better road, more people will actually use road and not just those that live on it. Narrow roads are actually a good way without lights or signs to slow people down. It protects drivers, walkers, and bikers. Well, the road width is going to be about the same as it is today. And, and again, it's not being paved. Paving usually increases speed. I mean, we just naturally want to speed on paved roads, right? <laughs> and it's not a very direct road to be a cut through. I mean, it's very windy, curvy. It's not a great shortcut. Yeah. Um, I did that the other night, by the way. It was a nice drive. It took me a while. <laughs> yeah. um, Laurel, I mean, other than, you know, Laurel Hill drains into Park Ridge. So that is a problem. How do you fix that when it rains? Laurel Hill regularly floods Park Ridge. Mm -hmm. and that does. That's that corner we looked at. That, There's multiple is that culverts near, there. Is that near Walnut? Yeah, it's that yeah. 180 yeah. degree, yep. 90 okay. degree turn. Yeah, we looked at that. We spent a lot of time looking at all that. So some of the culverts need to be replaced there. 
Oh, so an enlarged. That's enlarged, what right? About. Yep. Okay. Um, asking about speed again. Oh, Craig Road. First, trees were taken out and then road widened before limestone laid down. So they're they're concerned about that's what would happen with the Heart Ridge. Was it widened over the? I don't I don't know. Um, so that would widen the road overly significantly culverts in addition to road at 22 feet. So if you're saying that the, the this is a class C road. So subdivision, I'm not sure what class C is. Okay, well, I think that's the, the bottom tier of roads. <laughs> <laughs> so um, with, the, with the culverts on each side, that's not going to widen in the road. No. I think that's what they're asking. No. no. And I'm sorry if I'm not answered. I'm just going by what's no, no. did. Okay. No. Um, can we find out if a new culvert would need to be put in on our property before we decide if we join the SAD? So it's it's um, if the neighborhood seventy percent signs a petition, it begins the process. So it's not about joining, and you cannot leave yourself out. Let's say. Um, 70 percent it goes through everything's great and the everybody decides on this is what we want we'll pay for this goes in front of the board and the board accepts it and there's a few that reject and that's where at that role the, the role or the role of the assessing the assessment is when you can have your objection but it must be written or stated in a public comment and that's what you take to the michigan tax tribunal so that's where you, you can't say I'm not going to join this, but the rest of my neighbors will. It's if it if the majority agrees, it starts the ball rolling. Or yeah, I guess much of the water draining from Park Ridge goes down the ditches along Woodley. Wood, is it Woodley? Yeah, Woodley. Woodley. Yeah. Woodley. Yeah. Woodley and into a creek. The water frequently backs up from Woodley into the ditches along Park Ridge. Once the water flow improves along Park Ridge, how do we ensure it will actually continue into the creek? Is that true? As far, I mean, I don't know, but from drainage from Woodley onto Park Ridge? But there may have been some, may have to be some, we looked at some of those side roads, may have to be some improvements on some of those side roads to get yeah. the water away. So I think that's their question. The other thing we talked about is right now there's only a ditch on the one side. So all the water goes to that one side. The goal is to re establish a ditch on the other side so 50 percent of the water would stay on the the others the river side um, the road doesn't it's not really east west road it's a but the riverside versus the non-river side so right the non-river side is where the water is today the goal would be to re-establish a ditch on the other side so not all the water would have to go down woodley it's all we could go okay so that would help too um when it was brought up about taking a walk with the neighbors, I mean, um, so this person, Park Ridge resident, says, um, do a walk through and take a video as you go through. That's a good suggestion. Um, is the sad bean form based on one vote per parcel or based on the total frontage of each parcel? When it comes to votes, it's the part, the record owner of that parcel would sign if there is two people on the deed then both of them have to sign. When will the impacted trees be tagged? If it's if the petition begins. <laughs> <laughs> That's your I think the question is like would would the trees be tagged before people have the chance to sign back out? You know, before the neighborhood has the chance to yeah, I mean, it's the road commission. Yeah, it's going to be possible. I don't know. Right. I can answer that question. Yeah, I know we talked about the plan a little bit before that Washington engineering did, but would that be plan be of value just to see where the center line goes? I mean, you know, because oh. they would have pulled it back to the center line for each plot as they went along, and people would know what, what it was going to happen was going to be within that center line. It was. But we really weren't going to. Because if you sometimes gravel roads migrate, and the goal was just to put it back where it is today. Because let's say the roads migrated five feet this way, you know, then we're going to move up five feet back this way. So we're going to pretty much just keep the road where, regardless of legal center line. Right. Yeah. 
Okay, so okay. It, and most, most gravel roads don't follow. A right. lot of them don't follow the legal sign line just because over time they just moved. Well, I understand that. I just thought, I didn't know that they they. Okay, I thought that they laid it out relative to, to the. Never mind. Yeah. They so I mean that's what we've washed out. Yeah, if we're gonna pave it. We're gonna put it back on center line. But this, we're gonna just try to put it back the way here. Does it probably where it was in 1970? Does it vary a lot? No, that I don't think, well, I don't, I don't know. We didn't even look at the Washington engineering plans. I really don't know. All I know is you know, we're going to put it back to where it is today. Okay. So that's well, what. If you want a center line, they mark the, every one of the uh, lots, corners. So, right. you know, you should be able to go out. And, well, I know where ours is. And it, exactly. It, well, just measure from that to the No, I'm the road. talking about the people that were worried about getting oh. a tree knocked down or something. They would be able to see what was in that zone mm -hmm. from that area. Right. A lot more trees are going down than people anticipate because I was involved in that 1970 turning it over to the township or to the uh, road commission. And uh, at that point, there were, they gave us a lot of breaks when they took over the maintenance of that road. And the purpose was that we could only get probably 40% of the people to pay for the maintenance that had to be done. And the only way to force it would be to put them in <coughs> having the, you know, the, the county take over. Mm -hmm. And the road has never been officially designed because old man, what was his name? Pixel. So. He was an attorney. He, he handled bankruptcies. And he got this land through a payment on a bankruptcy. And he would sell a lot. He would hire the cheapest a, a surveyor he could find. They all did these surveys. None of them worked out the same. In fact, when we bought our lot in 1976, it disappeared. The everything was so bad that they had what they call an assessor's plat. The township put up the money to have it surveyed, and all of the mistakes in the survey ended up coming out of a lot that we bought. And in fact, when I bought the lot, I had to indemnify the title company that if it ever came down to a major suit, I'd have to cover some of the costs. And it turns out that in that survey, when they had it resurveyed, my lot appeared again. And you know, you could walk from one corner to the other, so it was pretty obvious there was a lot there. Bob, but that's excuse how bad me. It was. We we have like a really long list of questions that still need to be answered. Okay. So that's, I'm gonna just enough. interrupt you. Um, um, only other one question, so go ahead. Okay. <laughs> it's, um, here's a Laura Oral Landrum. She has her hand raised. I'm going to unmute her. Hi, um, I put a question in the chat, but it would be easier for me to explain here, and it might be sort of personal, but we are on that like driveway loop down toward the Laurentide end of Park Ridge. And I know that the drainage, we have a, a drainage easement on the border of our property that gets down to the river. Um, and I know that that's like county drain commission responsibility, but the culvert that connects it to the drainage from Park Ridge is more than 33 feet from the center line. So I'm just kind of curious about how, I guess the drainage is gonna connect from the sad district responsibility to the drainage commission responsibility and how those culverts are going to be improved and maintained because they sort of cross the, a no man's land of our little driveway loop there you're asking a specific question i think i'm familiar with where you're talking about the plan was to replace the crossroad culverts with new ones and then that's going to the water will flow across the surface of the land and get into the county drain area. So is that sort of answer your question? I mean, it's just gonna go across this. It's not gonna be a, a culvert all the way to the right of way. Once it leaves the crossroad culvert, 
I'll just go across the land to the drainage easement. So then the culvert that is, because the culvert that, the culvert that connects to the drainage easement is blocked and needs repair or it's not going to work. But that sounds like it's not within the scope of this project, but I feel like it needs to be done for it to actually function properly. Well, we did look at some of those. I can't, I don't, you know, we looked at a lot of culverts out there and that was whatever back in August. But yeah, the intent would be, yeah, if there's problems downstream is, you know, correct those. We, I mean, we're not going to go all the way to the Huron River, um, but if there's an inlet that's blocked, yeah, we don't unblock that inlet. Okay, thank you. Here's a follow-up to a, an audience question. Who is accountable if things do not go as planned or specifically whose pocket will it come from to fix? I think I answered that already, but yeah. um, the road committee, I mean, the road commission, the township, I mean, I, that, I guess would be my response, obviously. <laughs> I'm not the township, I'm not the road commission, but generally <laughs> that's how these projects, I mean, happen. But there's also a contingency fund right. for if mailboxes are damaged or mm -hmm. things right. like that. Um, right. We, we just had a couple of SADs that had uh, some issues and that's how it was taken mm -hmm. care of. Um, let's see. Uh, respectfully and sincerely, thank you for all the work done thus far. I recognize that many have worked towards moving this forward, and I appreciate how much you care about our neighbor. Okay, that wasn't a question, but there's a compliment for you. Um, I understand that if, that if two people own a parcel, my question is to form a SAD, is it one vote per parcel, or is it based on the percentage of frontage for each parcel? So it's, it's kind of two different questions because the, the, the road... The road frontage that, that has more to do with the cost, like it, how you how the parcels can be divided regarding cost. It can go by road frontage or it can go by equal. And in this case, it has been decided to go by equal because pretty much all the parcels are the same size, because that's what I understood. So when it comes to the petition itself, it it is a um, it's about the parcel owner or the record owners that would sign the, the petition. And again, if there's two record owners on a deed, both of them must sign. Right. Just and to clear, yeah, and just to clarify, per Act 246 of, of how special assessment districts are set up, this is the Township Act 246. It is, if we're only shooting for 51%, then it is based on front foot. So it's your vote is for front foot. Um, the goal that the township, and I, I think it makes a lot of sense, they're trying to get 70% of the property owners. Great. If you get 70% of the property owners, you're going to definitely have more than 51% of the people's frontage. So, but, but by the law, it's frontage that, you know, so if you're only, because I've done somewhere, that was the goal, just to get 51%. And we got it on, this was a long time ago, not in this township. Um, but it became controversial because obviously half of the people supported it, half didn't. So having the, the main super majority makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And that's a policy, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the township just wants to make sure everybody mm -hmm. in the neighborhood is on board as much as possible. Um, clarify, can we learn what happens to our property before we vote? Well, it's it's it wouldn't be their property, it would be the ditch or culvert in, in the front and then the road. So, and there, there will be a lot of parts in the process before we get to the first public hearing. And that's where the, the, um, um, the cost estimate, the everything else that needs to be discussed will be discussed then. Can I make a comment though? I think Roy, your, your suggestion, having walked through it, and learned about go to the culvert at your driveway. And I don't know if people know the difference between a culvert and a ditch. I didn't until mm -hmm. we walked through. But go to the, the round. Culvert's the pipe that. The pipe around. that goes under your driveway. Yeah, that's a culvert. Yep. Stand and, and point a straight line across your property. Mm -hmm. That's where a ditch might be. And there probably is remnants of a ditch that was there at one time, right. which most of the property 
we saw we, that. Yeah, we walked it. And yeah. that's where your ditch would like, be. It would line up with the culvert. Mine, is it her culvert? And it's like, okay, this is where it's going to be. That's, I think. That's where it used to be, and that's where we're going to try to reestablish it. Put and it if there is a tree in that direct line, it might have to come out. If it's not, then it only would have to be trimmed for the purpose of large trucks getting through. And that's, those are the only trees. And I think you're right, we counted five or six. And I wouldn't even call them trees, I'd call most of them sapling scrub. weeds. <laughs> scrub. Yeah. Yeah. So they would be in the ditch way. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's um, Gina is, is asking. So we have no idea which trees will be impacted. Um, the, the, that was just answered. And how much each person's frontage will be impacted before we sign. We just need to, we just need to trust. So the frontage would the frontage of the property would not change. The, I mean, the only thing is in the easement where the the ditch, if there's anything culverts that need to, or the ditch needs to be cleaned out and then the trees removed, that would be, but, you know, Gina, I understand about the distrust and that's why I got involved in the township. So, and, and the, the special assessments and the improvements and whatnot is my niche that I have really um, focused on. And I, I've been studying this a lot and we're going to make sure that this However, this works out. If you choose as a neighborhood to move forward, it will be done properly. Okay, and then we have Philip Rogers that has his hand up. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, the I'm sort of obsessed about the culvert and ditch question. But I, if if our driveway currently does not have a culvert, will there be one placed, and will, will there be a ditch? I. I, I uh, asked because we're, we're on a part of the riverside where the slope is quite steep off our off the road onto our driveway. And I'm just trying to envision in the absence of a culvert, will there be ditching put in? Well, I, well, I can't answer that because he's our next door neighbor. And yes. That. And the point, no, Phil, where we live, there will be no ditch because the slope is towards the river. And they, when they, we walk the road, the water will drain off the property. They'll figure out a way so that the drainage on the property is natural and it will not impair your uh, front lawn or our front lawn. Right. Yeah. Well, the other, the other issue for us is that there's a very large mature tree that, that would be right in the way. That that was my main concern. Thank no, you. Be, that won't be involved. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks so much. Amy, how will, um, this is from Janet Turner, how will we receive the petition, U.S. mail? So that's, that's, that would only be for the public hearing, um, the notice for the public hearing you will receive, first class uh, mail, but. Yeah, so for the petition, if you would like to sign the petition, which of course we hope you all will, then um, you please email us at Road at yahoo.com and Jan, I believe we've been in touch, I think if it's the yeah. same Jan, and we will we will get the petition to you to sign. I mean, we'll just schedule a time where one of us can bring it to your house to sign or you can come to our house and sign or whatever, so. Okay, and there's um, Nancy Rodriguez. Let me find her, she, she's having a hard time finding the hand to raise. So I'm gonna, Nancy, I'm unmuting you. Or asking to unmute. Okay. okay, so I've asked it a few different ways. Um, one big concern I have is that people speed on Park Ridge despite the condition the road is on. People speed more on Craig. Walnut to Craig, you take your life in your own hands when the school buses are coming through and when cars are trying to leave in the morning and come home at night. How we control that, improving the road, knowing that when we improve the road, that will allow people to go faster. People tend to slow down when there are potholes and they don't want to ruin their cars or when there's fresh dirt and they don't want the dust to rise. But when that gets taken away, how do we control the speeders? Because we don't have that control not on Craig, now on Craig. And I imagine that issue will also become a problem on Park Ridge which is truly a connector between Wagner and Maple. And we saw that be a connector when the circle was going in at Miller and Wagner and people were cutting through our neighborhood. 
It's, it is challenging to control speed on a local road. Probably the people speeding on that road are the people that live on that road. Because, I mean, I've gone on that road, but it really is not a very convenient cut through. So you, one way you do it, you find out who it is and you go talk to them. Because, I mean, they're going to, you know, find out who that teenager is. Because that's a lot of times who it is. Because I live in a subdivision. Sometimes you need to go talk to them or talk to their parents. Like, hey, this is a neighborhood. Slow down when you're driving on this road. I mean, that's the best way. I mean, you really aren't going to probably get the sheriff out there for enforcement. Um, so it really becomes neighborhood policing is the best way, really. I do a fair amount of that. You know, I wave, I do the slow down sign. I walk every day. So I am seeing this every day. Um, and these roads need to be good for drivers, but they also need to be good for the people who use the roads, which are the walkers and the bikers and kids walking to the bus and kids walking to school. And that's when the traffic tends to be the worst and the fastest in the morning and in the evening. And making the road more passable is going to only increase this and increase risk to those people that are using the roads, not in cars. Um, and I can tell you in looking at the cars, because I watch the cars go by, some are on Park Ridge, but there are a fair amount that are coming off of Robin Wood and other, um, other roads that are connecting to go out to Maple. Well, thank you. Thank you for that comment. And, and we'll think about that in, in terms, it's very hard to control teenagers driving their cars, but it's not we, just will, we will try to think adults. or moms. And I, I'm sure I'm, yeah. I'm one of those that you see, and I think it's very well taken. And I, the only thing I can say is I, I would love it if part of what happened out of this process is that we were more connected as neighbors and that we actually were all in connection with each other and that we could even have some people volunteer to go out on a couple mornings and, you know, stop cars and wave at people and say, slow down. And, and not just you as you're out walking on your own, but maybe if we can actually have a neighbor, neighborhood conversation and a neighborhood kind of um, action around it, maybe it'll hold people like me who are racing to get their kids to school, which is not an excuse. Um, it's unacceptable and that, that, you know, we should be held accountable and it should be our, it can, can be our neighbors doing it. Um, so I, I definitely think point well taken and I would suggest that we all get on an email list together and start talking about some of these issues and how we can help each other resolve them. Sidewalks would make a big difference. Well, then you're really taking property <laughs> and cutting down trees. <laughs> it's all easement that belongs to the it is. road commission, basically. And it is. Most neighborhoods with houses like ours have sidewalks, they've got regular streets. And people ask about the value. I was a realtor for 50 years. And paving Park Ridge, the whole road, would probably enhance the values of the homes on average 30 to $50,000. And we're not talking adding that kind of money to any of these houses. So I think we're, you know, we live in a, at an age of cars. It, it's, a, it's a given, we can't get rid of that. But if you really want to make this a neighborhood, let's put in sidewalks, let's put in curbs and gutters and do it right. But we're, we're kind of angling toward it with this. And I, I, would, I would respectfully disagree and say that I think the last round showed that people are very, protective of the environment that exists, which is lots of trees, lots of trees overgrowing the road, um, a dirt road, not a paved road. And I, I came away feeling like there was not a will to pave and that people valued the, the neighborhood they, they bought into. And I, I think what we're trying to do is say, let's bring back what it's supposed to be and hope that we, that by improving the, the road, we can all have an improved, you know, Amy, quality just, of life as well. After this, I want Tom Bloom to ask one question that he had posed um, that is a really good question that's financial and it's about what happens when you sell your house. So maybe uh, you could ask that because question. I thought that was- I, I had posed a 
question if you chose the 10 year payout, uh, what would happen if you move? Does that transfer to the new owner? Usually it's paid off before it has to be paid off before it's sold. So that's negotiated between the seller and the buyer, but um, it is paid off before because you can't have a special assessment on a house that's sold. It was, and you can pay it. So let, also, you can pay it off anytime. So let's say you, today you don't want to do it in, in three years. Like, I just want to get this paid off. You can come down to the township and they'll tell you the balancing paid off that time. But you're saying that if you've initiated the participation in the SAD, you're responsible for the entire amount, even if you happen to move the next year or two? Yeah, you, when you, if you sell your home. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but obviously it's negotiated when you're, you're the buyer. And you can negotiate. I was just I was just gonna add that there was an SAD that just started on Daleview and a uh, home was sold and the buyer paid off the SAD. So they negotiated for the mm -hmm. person who was buying the house to pay off the SAD. So they paid off the entire amount of the SAD yeah. when purchased. So it's, it doesn't have to be either the current owner or the buyer necessarily, it's negotiated. Yeah, that's not that's not a policy through the SAD process, but that's through the title company. Usually. Some more questions? Um, we are getting close to nine o'clock. And let me just say, if you have questions that come up, please email us and we will do our best to get answers. Again, we'd love to be able to share them with everybody. So um, for those who are on Zoom, I don't know if we get a way to keep the chat after it's over, but maybe they could send in their email addresses and we can add them to the list. What I can do is um, place the chat window and then it'll Take be it recorded in the... Yeah. Oh, there's one more message. Let's see. Oh, she gave us her email. Great. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you. Anything else? Because we will wind up if... Yeah. And we will be having another meeting if people want to move forward. One last question. Is the unpaid portion of this payable? In other words, we're not going to meet the same specifications of the current paving because we're not going to be 22 feet wide. Can you pave over this or do we have to go through the whole process and wider the Yes, you have to do the wider and all that. Yes. Oh, uh, just to get the unpaved paid portion paid. Right. This is not setting it up to be paved. This is just setting it up to reestablish it like like it was in 1970. I don't know what it was in 1970. I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> Maybe yeah. hopefully it'll be better than it was in 1970. We'll reestablish it as a, a, a good gravel soft surface road. Thank you for coming. Thank you guys. Yep. Appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Thank all of you and all of you for participating. I think you're right. Yeah, you're welcome.